Believe it or not, every day you go through a PDSA cycle. For example, every day when you get in your car and start to go to work, you go through a PDSA cycle. You get in the car, you listen to the radio, you've planned your trip, you're heading down the road, and then you're told that in fact there is a wreck on a road that you typically use. So you've planned your journey, you're doing it, you're studying it now because you're getting feedback off the radio, and then you discover that, that this road is closed. So what do you do? You take that information, you put it into your brain, and then you say, ah, I'm going to get off this road and I'm going to take a different route to avoid that accident. You've just gone through a P PDSA cycle. Similarly, let's say that you had a sick house plant. And this plant was not doing too well. You could try a number of things. You could try more water. You could try fertilizer. You could try a bigger pot because it's root bound. You could try a variety of things, but again, you would be doing plan, do, study, act. So as we think about the PDSA cycle, it is a very simple thing, yet many people can describe it, but they've had trouble carrying them out. Historically, the PDSA cycle was developed by a gentleman by the name of Walter Schuhart. Walter Schuhart, back in the 1920s, working at Western Electric in Cicero, Illinois, and in New Jersey, took the scientific method, that is, inductive and deductive thinking, where you go from the specific to the general, from the general to the specific, with hypothesis testing. He took that scientific method and turned it into a very simple notion that when we're going to do something, we're going to plan it, do it, study, and act. Now remember, Schuhart and his students, Deming and Duran, were working on the shop floor at Western Electric. They could not, as PhDs trained in physics, engineering, statistics, take the academic scientific method and apply it to shop floor, where people were working, making old-fashioned telephones. Those people, many of which did not read, could not explain the scientific method, were very, very engaged because Schuhart was able to take the complexity of this and turn it into a very simple thing that we do every day. Plan, do, study, act. This then becomes the way we carry out a test. Every day you're doing something, whether you think about it or not, you're actually doing a PDSA. What we're trying to do is when we give you a PDSA form and you're going to fill out this PDSA form, you're actually going to say, here's my plan bullet, bullet, bullet. Here's how we're going to do it, and here are the people. Mary's going to do this, Bill's going to do that, Tom's going to do this. We're going to study it. We're going to get some data, and we're going to collect it, we're going to track it, see how the process performed against that test, and then we're going to act by modifying it and come back up and plan our next cycle. PDSA is not a one-time event where you do it once and then go away. What you do is actually do these, you link them sequentially, and they move forward, test one, test two, test three. And so we're going to link the PDSAs starting out in small tests. You're going to start with one patient on one day possibly. Then you might move to three patients. Then you might move to five patients, and eventually you can apply it to all, but it requires testing under a variety of conditions. So we start small with small test of change, and then we start testing them under different conditions. It worked well in this unit, but then when you went over to the next unit and tested that same notion, it didn't work too well. Why? Different conditions, different people, different variation in the process. So every day you're going to have the opportunity to think about applying these things in a very, very practical yet concerted way. So let's apply the PDSA cycle to an actual example. Let's take, for example, discharge planning. That is getting a patient out of the hospital on time when they were told they'd be discharged, which pleases the patient, the family, and the next set of patients that need to come in. So what is our plan? The first plan aspect that we're going to do is that we've worked with the team to develop a new discharge planning form. 
Now this form is a task that has to be done in order to achieve a test. And oftentimes people get confused between a task and a test. The test is going to be taking the form and applying it to a patient. So now this form has check boxes, it has pharmacy, it has discharge planning instructions, education, other things that are needed. Now we're going to do it. That is, on next Monday, we're going to get one of the discharge planning nurses, Tom, to take this form and apply it to three patients. We're not going to do it on all 50 patients. We're not going to do it on the whole hospital. We're going to start out with a small test. Three patients. Tom's going to take the form and use it with these three patients. We're going to get feedback then. We're going to study. And Tom is going to come back and we're going to get feedback from Tom on whether or not the form worked. Were things easy to fill out? Did he have to look all over the place? Did the flow of information work well? So Tom's going to give us feedback. Then we're also going to get feedback by keeping track of the percent of patients discharged by 11 o'clock. And we're going to keep this little run chart to look at our progress over time. And as we do more tests, we're going to accumulate more data. And eventually, we'll be able to see if, in fact, this form and what goes with it is actually improving the percent of patients that get discharged uh, less than 11 a.m. Then we're going to act. We're going to take the feedback from Tom and from our data, and then we're going to think about the next test with more patients, maybe on a different unit. Maybe now we're going to take it instead of just from three west, we're going to take it and apply it to all med surge floors. Now when we've tested under different conditions, and we're now accumulating, we've tested it with 3, 5, 10, 15 patients. At some point after we've tested under different conditions, we're going to be ready to move to the next phase, which is to implement. That is implementation of the test, in this case the form, to all units. But we wouldn't want to do that until we've tested, especially under different conditions. And finally, once we've implemented, we'll be ready to engage ourselves in some spread. Let's say that we are part of a system, and that system has three hospitals. So we've been testing it starting on one unit, Tom's unit. Then we're going to go to this hospital. Then we're going to move to the next two hospitals and spread that that has been tested and documented. But it all starts with our PDSA cycle and allows us to give a framework for testing one idea against a group of patients that eventually will be allowed to implement and to spread on a regular basis. It all starts with the testing of PDSA.